Hi, welcome to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can create this cover page in Word. So first off we're going to insert our graphics. So go to insert, shapes, click on the drop down and select the rectangle. Just click and draw out a rectangle. And with every shape that's inserted into Word it will have a border line and a fill shape. If we select this rectangle, go to shape format and over here you'll have a drop down menu for your outlines. I'm going to select no outline and the shape fill for the time being we're going to leave the shape fill until we've inserted the photograph then we're going to try to match some colors. So I'm just going to place this rectangle at the top here, move that up. I'm going to copy and paste this. The quickest way to do it is to select it, hold down your alt or option key, click and drag. I'm just going to zoom out very slightly so we can get the whole page in. There we go. And pop that at the bottom. Then I'm going to click and drag out another rectangle. Right, sometimes if you double click on your shape, you'll have this extra menu up here. This is a very useful menu and another way to access it is to go to Format Pane. And this just shows you again your fill colours and your border lines and there's a lot more customization here. But for the time being, we're just going to insert these simple shapes. I'm going to copy and paste this one again and again. Now it's copied and pasted another one because I had them both selected. That's fine because we can utilize this rectangle as well. So I'm just going to pop all of these down here. Then I'm going to go to Insert, Pictures, click on the drop down and you can either select a picture from your files, maybe you've selected one online, or I'm going to select from stock images because Word does provide you with quite a number of different images. So I'm just going to type in buildings, just something easy, and I'm going to scroll down and find an image of my choice. I'm going to select this one here and just click insert. Now when you insert an image into Word, you won't be able to move it. So make sure it's selected, go to picture format, go to wrap text and select in front of text. Now we're going to crop this to a shape so it fits diagonally across the page. So select it, go to picture format, go to crop, go to crop to shape, and then I'm going to select this shape here. Now it's called diagonal stripe and I'll show it to you. Sorry, my screensaver wouldn't capture it. So if you go to shapes, it's this shape here. So that's the one I've selected. Now from here, I'm just going to make it a lot bigger and I'm just going to move it across my page to a position I want, maybe a little bit wider. There we go. So you can see my photograph has gone over the top of this rectangle. So select it, go to picture format, go to centre backwards or send backwards, click on the drop down and select centre back. And you can see now that that has sent it to the back and we have our rectangle on the top. Just so that you're aware, when you're in the picture format pane, go to selection pane, and here you can see all of the different elements you've selected and placed into your document. So if you're ever concerned about selecting anything or which one's behind each other, you can actually move them as well. So you select them, you can drag them on top of each other. So it's a little bit like a layers panel. So now I'm going to take this rectangle, I'm just going to turn it round and line it up with the angle of the image. There we go. And then we'll move that over the top here. We can make that a bit wider if you want to. And again, we're going to send backwards, center back. Then we're actually going to use this one here to actually cut off the angle here. So we want a straight angle across the top here. So I'll show you, you see this angle here. So we're going to use this by laying it on the top there, going to shape fill and selecting white. And then just click on center backwards, don't go to the drop down, just keep clicking until it just goes behind the photograph, but not behind this rectangle here. Or of course, you can just use your menu over here to identify where your, tri your rectangle is. You can see we're on this rectangle here, and it's just gone below the picture. So this rectangle here, I think we can get rid of. So we're just going to delete that one. And I think what we need to do is maybe move everything down a little bit just to give us some extra room at the top there. And you can see the rectangle, the white rectangle has disappeared. 
So we can highlight that. I think it's this one here. So select it. You can see there it is and just move it down or select it, move it above the picture and we can drop it down and move it below the picture. There we go. Now we can think a little bit more about colour. So you can see we've got an image here with lots of different colours in it, but mainly yellows, oranges and blues. So we're going to pick our theme for our colour here. So if we select on this rectangle here, go to Shape Format, go along to Shape Fill, click on the drop down and go to More Fill Colours. Now here you have a colour wheel and you have this square here that will tell you whatever you move this cursor to, the resulting colour will appear here. So you can begin to try to match your colours. If we move this over the photographs, you can begin to match your colours by moving this cursor roughly where you might like your colour. You can also use the brighten and darker slider as well. But if you're fortunate enough to have one of these, which is an eyedropper tool, you can simply click on that and hover anywhere over your picture and then simply click on a colour of your choice. So that one's a little bit dark, so let's move over something that's a little lighter and click OK. And you can see my colours change at the top here. I can click on this rectangle and because that colour has already been selected, we can just click. Again at the bottom, just click. Now again, we can go to Insert, Shapes, and we can insert one of these parallelograms. Click and drag out a parallelogram for our text. Now with this one, you can see we've got this little yellow square. What this enables you to do is further customise your shape. So we're going to need that angle to match this angle here. But first, we're going to make this as big as we need it, because every time you make an adjustment to this rectangle, the angle will change. So we can go to the top here and match that angle. So as you can see, can try and match this angle here, but it doesn't quite go all the way across. So making sure that it's big enough. You can see that angle there, it doesn't quite match. So we'll just adjust it one more time. Then we can bring it down to around about here. We can go and take the outline off again. We can go to shape fill. This time, because we're going to put some text over here, we can actually reduce the transparency of this. So select it, go to Shape Format and go over to your Format pane, which is here. You do have to be careful across the top here, there are several different options. You have to make sure you're on Format Shape and you have to make sure you're on the bucket icon. Go down to Fill and this is where you have filled your shape. But you can see here there's a transparency slider. Just click and move that transparency slider to the right and you can see, you can begin to see the picture through that shape. Once you're happy, go to insert, text box, draw text box, click and draw out a text box. Now with all text boxes, they come with a black borderline and a white fill colour. For this demonstration, I'm going to get rid of both of those, so select it. Go to Shape Format, again, go to Outline and get rid of the outline. And this time, we're going to get rid of the fill colour. We're going to put our cursor inside by just clicking inside and insert some text. And we're just going to highlight that text, go to Home. And here, of course, you can make your adjustments to text. First of all, we're going to change the colour to white. Then using this icon, we're going to increase the font size. We're going to move this over here and then reduce the size of this text just by a couple here. So I'm going to enter it in manually. I'm going to put 32 and press enter. But for this one, I'm going to increase it. So I'm going to select it and use the increase font icon and just move that down. There we go. So now I'm going to click and drag out this text box. That means we don't have to go ahead and take the background and the outline off again. And I'm just going to change the text to black and move it down here. I'm going to create a small title. It's just simply some placeholder text. I'm going to take this down to 18 and I'm going to change the text color to one of these colors we've used before. Maybe put that to bold 
Maybe just change one of them to bold and keep one of them without. I am also going to move the text over to the right to align it to right. I'm going to copy and paste it. And then I'm going to select this box here. I'm going to put some more random text in. Here you can do that by pressing equals R-A-N-D, open parentheses. You can put in the number of paragraphs first, comma, number of sentences in that paragraph, close parentheses and press enter. So I'm going to select all of this text, command or control A. Then I'm going to take off the bold. I'm going to turn it to black. I'm going to change it to this one here, reduce the size of it and then place that underneath that text there. Now, of course, as you're going along this process, you'll see things that either jar, they don't suit, you want to make them bigger or smaller, and that's perfectly acceptable. You can completely customize this yourself. This text for me is a little small, so I'm just going to increase the size of it. The reason I don't put this and this in the same text box is because I have full control over how close or far away I can place this text. And what I'm actually going to do is select them both and I can do that by holding down my command or control key. I can go to shape format. I can make sure they're aligned to their right hand edge and select align to right. Then I can group them together and now I can move that all as one element, which is really useful. So I'm going to put some small boxes at the bottom here. I'm going to copy and paste this rectangle and just move that over, select it, go to shape format and to make it sure it's a square, at the moment it's 2.24. I'm actually going to change that to 1.5 because I think that's a bit big. And then I'm going to copy and paste this so we have six boxes along the bottom. I'm going to space this one out to this edge here that lines up with this text. I'm going to space this one out to about there then select them all, holding down that command or control key. Then go to align, go to distribute horizontally. That will make sure there's an equal space between each one. Then align to top and then group. And then once again, you can move these anywhere. If you want them lined up in the middle of the page, just go to align, align to center, and they'll all be perfectly lined up in the middle of the page. So then I can bring this down a little bit. And then at the top here, I can put my logo. So go to insert, picture, picture from file. I can select any logo of my choice. I'll select this one here, click insert. Once again, you can't move it. So go to wrap text in front of text. And I'll just resize this and pop it here. And normally you'll have some kind of logo so I'm just going to steal that text again. So I'm going to ungroup those two boxes and this one, I'm going to select it, hold down my Alt or Option key, click and drag and pop that up there. But you'll of course have your own individual logo. So once I'm happy with those two, I'm actually going to group them together. So select them both holding down the Command or Control key. Go to Picture Format, Group and select Group. And now I can move that together. So once you've completed this, you can save it out as a PDF file. You can keep it as a Word document or you can save this as a template. To do that, just go to File, Save as Template. Make sure you've saved it in your templates file and make sure it's the file format is a Microsoft Word template. That means when you open your Word documents again or open the Word program, you have your templates on the home page. Then you can use this over and over again. If you make any adjustments to it, it doesn't matter. It will make you save it as a completely separate document and then just click save. Now, if after all this, you really can't be bothered to do it, you can download this template. I will put a link in the description below. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.